Joining me this week is Willow Creative, maker of the fantastic Carapac cosplay displayed at RuneFest 2019, and also previously having created a giant next costume. She's also well known for her costumes from other games, including Pokemon, Diablo, WoW, all sorts of stuff. In this interview today, we're going to be chatting about how she got into RuneScape, her favourite bits that she likes to mess around with in-game, how her Carapac cosplay came into being, how she got into cosplay in the first place, and many other topics. So join me as I head into the mind of Willow Creative. Hello Willow. How are Hi. you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for spending your time with me this evening. Uh, I'm sure many people know you. They've they've seen a couple of your works in the uh, in the intro. So mm -hmm. let's get into how you got into RuneScape. Uh, I've actually been playing since I was uh, ten or eleven years old, I think, because like around that age, it's pretty much where every veteran got into RuneScape, and uh, where you see your classmates playing it, and you're like, oh, I gotta try that out, and then you go free to play and. I've been like that for a while, and then high school, I stopped for a while, started getting into League of Legends and all those other popular games at the time, and then I got back into it in RuneScape 3, and uh, that's, that's where I'm at really right now, because uh, yeah, I, I really like how it's been evolving since, since uh, about a decade ago, 2007, 2008, and uh, where RuneScape 3 is at right now, and that's... Uh, that's where I'm at right now. So I think that's like 13, 14 years ago. It's a long time. It's a very long, long time. time. <laughs> it was like, I think it was my first MMO as well. Like back in the day, MMOs were all either you had to pay for them or uh, they were limited uh, in the amount of players that you would need. Yeah, there just wasn't and, the population. And Escape was really that, uh, that free MMO that you could play and uh, meet a lot of people. Oh well, yeah, just being on the browser... Like that made it so much more accessible for people. It made it well. very easy. Yeah, yeah. I, ha I I was able to play on the in the library and at school and uh, you know, cause <laughs> good, really good. the good old times, you know. Yeah, good for us, not good for the teachers. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> so, have you had a like favorite time when you've been playing the game? Um. Well. Uh, I don't know really. It's it's been so long ago, uh, but back uh, when I still had like a couple friends uh, from school playing. Over the years, of course, a lot of people drop off, people join, so it's kind of changes around a little bit. And I'm, I've mostly playing, been playing solo, but I've been playing with my little brother a lot of times, and it was always nice to share, uh, share and uh, and, and get about. loot together, you know. Yeah. <laughs> get like that really special dragon medium helmet drop from the lesser <laughs> demons back in the day so that was the shit <laughs> you'll be like oh i got a dragon medium helmet it's like 12k or something and, <laughs> and it was just awesome <laughs> so where did the username come from um so my uh username uh in runescape itself is willow cookie and the username for my uh, cosplay account is Willow Creative, and both of them were derived from the Willow Trees in RuneScape, actually. And uh, yeah, because like, I would be cutting Willow Trees in Drainer Village and, and be doing that all the time, because Willow Trees, back in the days, they were actually pretty profitable. And uh, especially if you were a free-to-play player, Willow Trees and Big Bones, that was pretty much all you were doing. And I had to come up with a new nickname. So that's how it, I, how it kind of came together. And then it stuck from there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so have you got a, a favorite quest? I don't know if you've done... I have. I almost got my uh, quest cape, actually. I, uh, I, I got, I'm stuck on the Sliska's endgame. The boss fight's just uh, too much for me. Uh, for favorite quests, um, I really like Dragon Slayer, of course. The old, uh, old Elvark Dragon Slayer, I've done that one. And um, other than that, it's not really any quest that stuck with me. But then again, there's so many quests in RuneScape, yeah. So it's it it got kind of overwhelming at that point. <laughs> yeah, for me when I started last year, having like mm -hmm. 270 quests just laid out in front of me, I was like, where do I even start with this? 
Yeah, and it's they're so all hard. pretty long, you know. It's not like uh, an easy quest like kill the X dragons and then you're done, you know. That's what Slayer is for. So the quests are really overwhelming. But uh, they're really nice to play also. Yeah, it's a very unique sort of aspect of the game because all the other MMOs, their quests are not necessarily as in-depth. Mm -hmm. so I, quite like I remember, um, I think, it, is it Death of Chivalry? I'm not sure. Actually, no, the... Um, you remember the monastery in, next to Alcarit? It had like a voice quest with all lots mm -hmm. of music and stuff. Yeah. I really liked that one. Uh, uh, one it was like, it was like a detective note, quest. Is, yeah, one piece. Yeah, note, it was a detective yeah. quest where you had to solve the mo murder. That was pretty cool. The I like that one. Yeah. yeah. And have you got a favorite NPC? Favorite NPC. Um. Ooh, that's pretty hard. I really like uh oh what's his, what's his name the old man wizard <laughs> the wise old man the wise old man yeah, yeah he was yeah. cool and uh for bosses I think Nex is my favorite he's mm -hmm. really cool yeah that's also I cosplayed Nex uh two years ago it was uh, it was cool all right and do you play much nowadays because obviously you're very uh, busy. Yeah, I've I've been busy with a lot of stuff, but uh, RuneScape has always been that game where I come back and uh, relax for a little bit to do some skilling, and, and that's that's a uh, that's what I do. Uh, I check on my farm every once in a while, and uh, I I don't do like really die hard RuneScaping anymore. Unfortunately, I just don't have the time for that, and no longer really any patience. <laughs> But it's really nice to check in and do some tasks and uh, and do some skilling whenever I need to calm down and uh, just play uh, for a while. You got any dinos yet, or not really? No, not yet. I I, I have. Uh, it's just uh, it's a little tricky getting like the baby dinosaurs. Yeah. And it takes quite a lot of time, so I haven't dedicated myself to it yet. <laughs> uh, but I do want to check it out. Yeah. I I did check out the uh, the land out of time in general. Did some hunting on the big dinos and stuff. <laughs> it was pretty tricky, but once you get the, like a hang of it, it's, it gets pretty nice. Yeah, I haven't given it a go yet. It does look fun, though. It's mm -hmm. Definitely something for the future. So, how was your time at RuneFest this year? Because obviously you did the uh, the Carapac cosplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was my first time at RuneFest, actually. And uh, I really enjoyed the, the evening before with the golden gnomes and everything. And it was just really cool to see everyone there and uh, and be part of the show. And then uh, the next day on uh, Saturday, I wore my Clarapac costume. And it, it, it was really a hassle getting everything there because I had to fly it over. And I had to put it into large crates to uh, get it in uh, luggage and everything, and unpack everything, assemble everything, getting everything on me was quite uh, was quite a challenge. Yeah. And then and then trying to walk around and then <laughs> not seeing every, if anything and trying to walk on the feet and everything was pretty difficult. And I, I really tried not to swing anyone over. It was kind of difficult <laughs> as well. Yeah, it's very <laughs> tricky with wings that are like. Yeah, but it was it was yeah. really exciting to uh, put it on and be able to showcase it. So uh, so that kept me on my legs and uh, kept me going, you know. And uh, I was able to uh, have it out two times and uh, make some pictures for people and show it off, and it was cool. I really like doing that. That's that's kind of what you do it for. So, mm. so, so, how did it like come about? What was the the ins well? Where did it come from initially? Sort of the the idea mm -hmm. and actually uh, putting it into practice. Yeah. So I uh, I'm a game art student uh, in college, like uh, community college, and then um, I'm working on uh, graduating. And since I've been uh, doing all this, all these costumes, and I have my own store right now with all kinds of digital items and costumes and all that kind of stuff, and I kind of wanted to combine like everything together with costume making, my college, and uh, and uh, and my future work, what I'm doing, I'm making right now with the shop. So I proposed my to my college that I would make a costume for my uh, final graduation project. And I decided to ask uh, one of the J mods to see if they could uh, give me a project and be like, because because you, if you want to do a graduation project, you need to do it for an external client. So Jagex uh, agreed to give me a project, and they gave me a couple options uh, for uh, the new uh, 
items that were coming out that year, which was uh, Land Out of Time last summer and uh, Desperate Times, Desperate Measures, the yep. quests. So they gave me a couple NPCs from the quest, uh, such as uh, Siren, uh, Talk, and um, the new uh, design for uh, Karos. Karos? I don't, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, mm -hmm. but the guy, the Ring of Karos guy. Yep. And they also gave me Karapak. Uh, so I had a couple to choose from, and in the end, I chose for Carapac because, like, I wanted to do some crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done I've done some wings before, so I figured um, maybe maybe I could pull this off and have it ready for Runefest. And it was pretty challenging, but I did pull it off, and I uh, I took some extra weeks on my uh, graduation project to get it uh, to Runefest and uh, debuted it there, and that's how it all uh, came to be, really. So do you start by like? doing sort of a 3D model of it sort of in on a PC to work out how all the, all the bits are going together or is it you sketch it all out or mm -hmm. how how do you start um, like a whole yeah so Jagex gave me the uh the concept art for uh Carapac at the time and basically you just take a look at it and see like what 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 parts is are in there and how you could put the, those parts together and um, I actually have a 3D body scan of myself, uh, which I made uh, at my college as well. Uh, so I have like a direct 3D reference uh, for myself. And based on that, I can make a silhouette, a 3D an easy sketch of a 3D model, basically. That kind of helps me see how I uh, need to build it up and uh, where, to, where all the parts need to go, how, how big they need to be. And that really helped me in uh, approaching the costume for a care pack and make sure it's like the right sizes and the right scale and all that and then you go into what kind of materials each part should uh should be composed of and uh how you eventually put those parts together into one big costume really and that the 3d really helped for that and that's uh and that's also what i was uh, learned at college and uh, was able to use in all of my costumes right now so making something like a mask, I, I I always wonder how people can see out of them. It's because especially like Carapax one. Uh, um, I actually got Carapax here right now. Which hey, here he is. There he is. <laughs> so mostly masks you can see through the tear ducts uh, often enough. Uh, for Carapac, I decided not to do that because like you will see a big large gap. So the mouth is still completely open. So mm. when I open the mouth, I can kind of see through the mouth. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Also because like the head is kind of mounted in front of me and not uh, not on top of me. And like um, for Carapac, I also had some space between the neck and the head here that I could see through. So this okay. entire area was open wide. And then um, I also have the mask for Nesk here. Necks here. And for next, it was a little bit more form fitting. And for next, I uh, I opted to have some openings between the eyes and the eyebrows. So this is all black, and you can mm. kind of see through here. It's not a lot, and it kind of sucks. But if you're a little bit familiar with it, then uh, you can figure it out. Uh, of course, having someone around you that can watch for you when you're walking into something or someone that helps a lot too yeah. especially with these large costumes it's kind of a necessary uh, thing to have so it's just a case of a lot of lot of practice and wearing it beforehand so you get an idea of the spatial sort of stuff yeah for sure and just make sure you don't uh do any uh do any uh weird moves uh, or anything that will make you trip because you can't see your feet so you gotta mm. be careful with that well, especially because you had stilt sort of things as well weren't they? yeah yeah that yeah. makes it even harder i had to make sure that the stilts were at least somewhat comfortable to wear otherwise i would just trip because i can't see where i'm walking you know which makes it even more challenging at that point <laughs> So, have you ever been stopped in an airport with one of your costumes and questioned about it? Um, I flew into Florida once with a skull in my uh, in my uh, cabin luggage, and they were very confused <laughs> <laughs> when they saw that going through the X-ray because, like, <laughs> it kind of looks like a skull, but not really. 
and uh, they, they wanted to just have a look at it and be like, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, I just had to take this with me in my cabin because I don't want it crushed in the, in the airplane, uh, airplane yeah. luggage, you know? <laughs> uh, for Carapac, they didn't care, either, so uh, I don't think it was opened at all or checked, mm. so I was quite lucky. I don't want to get a little ace or have a TSA break my stuff or anything, yeah. you know? <laughs> But yeah, they they def- definitely don't like skulls. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what... I haven't traveled with any guns or replicas okay. like that before, so the guns will probably be more difficult. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, what inspired you to start cosplay? Where did that love first come from? Um. So I had a friend in high school, and he liked to go to like the Ren fairs, the Renaissance fairs. And uh, he invited me along at some point, and everyone at the Renaissance Fair was somehow dressed up or had elf ears or fancy dresses, all that kind of stuff. So the next time I wanted to go with him, and of course I had to figure out something for myself to uh, uh, to dress up as. And then later I found out that people actually dress up as uh, characters as well, rather than just having a costume. And I figured that would be a lot more suitable for me because I I liked games and all that kind of stuff. So it would be a perfect way to uh, to combine all that and make costumes for characters. And that's how I ended up with all this. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the first like? So was that the first sort of cosplay you did then, or what was the first one? Like, yeah, yeah. The that? first costume uh, was uh, basically a mashup for a black. Uh, like the black uh, trimmed armor in RuneScape, and I had like uh, an old style Slayer cape without mm-hmm. the icon then, because like I kind of wanted it to be my own Black Knight costume, and I added like spikes on the black armor and all that. And uh, but I kind of just combined all that like elements from RuneScape and then make my own fancy armor from it, and that was like my first costume I made back in the day. And which, so, which was... has the like um, materials and process. I, I'd imagine um, they changed quite a lot since that very first costume. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I yeah, I, uh, I started. I made that costume when I was sixteen, so that was like ten years ago. And back then, I uh, I used a lot of paper mache and uh, chicken wire. So that's kind of how you make all your carnival costumes and it's all all that stuff. And then later on, uh, a couple of years ago, I started actually looking at what other uh, costumers did and used for their uh, costumes and then I started learning all sorts of different materials and how to use them for my uh, costumes as well and uh, apply it in a lot of different ways rather than just sticking with paper mache because it has its limitations obviously yeah. <laughs> so that's when I really started uh, evolving uh, in making costumes uh, so to say So have you got a favourite material that you like to work with? Uh, I'm really into 3D printing right now, and uh, I really like the the EVA foam that uh, a lot of cosplayers now use nowadays. It's very soft and easy and light way to w- uh, work with. So it's basically like yoga mats and then glued into a bit of different shapes, and uh, you can carve them in all kinds of shapes uh, to to get the armor you want. And uh, that's that's probably my favorite materials right now. It's just nice and lightweight, but easy to sculpt and. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's very easy to uh, to apply, and you don't have to mess with like glue and send, and uh, newspapers like paper mache. So, when you, what? Well, how do you decide on a project? I guess to work on is it just like a character that you personally sort of like and connect with, or it's 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 usually a little bit on the fly. I always have like older with interesting characters and armors and. Uh, outfits that I could make and it's it's probably like 30 or 40 uh different uh different characters and then usually I pick one of those uh based on what kind of games I'm into right now and uh what if I really like the aesthetic if it fits with my uh, if it fits with my own body and if I can if I can learn something with the costume like if I have to apply a different te- technique or different material for it and I really like figuring that out and uh, trying to put it together. And based on that, uh, I pick my next cost, uh, project, really. Usually I create a couple t- uh, at the same time, so I can just uh, have a different 
uh, project to work on when I get tired of another one or yeah. when I switch games again, etc., etc. You don't just burn out on one single thing. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's the same as when you pick a game to play, and uh, sometimes you just want to do something else and uh, something that's a little easier, a little, a uh, little more lightweight to work on. So it's another benefit of this foam stuff. Does it help with the heat? Because obviously a lot of the costumes do look very warm. <laughs> yeah, no, they're all very warm. It doesn't matter if you're wearing foam or if you're wearing plastic or 3D print. It all gets pretty warm. Uh, just based on how many layers there are. and uh, But yeah, Care Pack was probably my hottest one yet because I had to wear so much extra foam to make sure I had like the, the extra body and extra bulk for Carapac uh, on me you know and uh, as long as as long as you can easily put, take off like a helmet or take off uh, anything else uh, make it as easy to take off as possible that you can just uh, take a break and uh, and recover a little bit so you, so it doesn't get too hot <laughs> so that that is your main way of coping is literally just making sure you can have regular breaks and yeah yeah and make sure it can it can go off and uh, if you if you kind of make like gaps in between, mm. but at the same time it still looks okay, and uh, like it doesn't have gaps, then that helps a lot for airflow as well and uh, against the heat. I do have one of those uh, cooling vests, but usually they don't really fit into my costumes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I end up making the costume. I'm like, oh, I have one of those cooling vests. It will keep me cool, and then it doesn't fit. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Why do I even bother? <laughs> But have you had any moments when you've been making costumes that you've been like, I wonder if this will work, and you just go for something and then suddenly it, it works? Like moments of inspiration, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, the first time I made a pair of wings, um, I really wanted to make wings for a while, like really big wings, and because they just look so freaking awesome. Uh, but I didn't. I I I, uh, I checked a lot of references online, and uh, they were all like metal and uh, complicated motors and complicated constructions and all that. And I really didn't want to do that, as it was heavy, and I didn't want uh, want to figure out how to work with all that hardware. So I tried to use like uh, conduit uh, pipes, like the PVC pipes that you use for conduits and uh, electrical wiring, and it worked out surprisingly well. And it actually gave the wings a little bit more flexibility and realism that I really liked about it. And it actually worked out way better than I expected. Although, like the first two prototypes or something, something broke, of course. Uh, like any time it will break. But it, it wasn't the PVC pipes that really gave out. It was uh, mostly the connections I tried to make with them. So I learned a lot about that, and eventually it figured it out and made it work. And that was really like a moment of uh, a moment of accomplishment at that mm. point uh, that it worked out, and uh, it was even working out better than I expected. So, have you got a story of where a cosplay went like completely wrong? <laughs> oh, then it happens all the time. <laughs> like usually, you try to have test. Make sure that nothing breaks uh, before you actually wear it at an event where you can't really do much to fix it. And eventually uh, you'll always miss something and uh, and it breaks down. But especially when I was uh, st still starting out, I was uh, making costumes uh, maybe like my third year or something. And uh, I got a couple of friends uh, with me and we went to a competition and I had similar... Uh, stilts to uh, my care pack but back in the days i didn't know much about hardware i made them out of wood it was really heavy and uh one of them broke before i had to go uh to the competition and unfortunately i had to cancel the competition because i couldn't uh fix it before i had to go on stage and it was really unfortunate but it just happens and uh there will always be uh, drawbacks and uh and failures uh, that you'll have to get through before you actually uh, make it uh, work on something. So if someone wants to get into cosplay now, but they just want to start doing themselves, say, casually, obviously at first, that's how most people will get into it, what would you say a good sort of point to start is? Um, there's certainly a lot of uh, so resources online right now. Back when, uh, 10 years ago when I started, there weren't 
that all that many people that were making videos and all that. Uh, nowadays, you can see find a lot of videos online on how to make like popular props and uh, popular techniques. Um, I think a lot of people will know uh, Mythbusters, for example. And uh, though Mythbusters no longer exist, uh, one of the guys on the show, Adam Savage, is uh, involved in a lot of costumes. And uh, he has his own show right now where he displays a lot of different uh, crafts and costumes and tools and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it really helps bring a cosplay to the to the bigger public. Uh, besides that, uh, they also have a lot of guests on the show uh, that uh, that are involved into making cosplays and have a lot of videos on how to make like simple props, simple helmets. And uh, I, I really recommend those because uh, they really approach it in a in a very simple way, uh, and uh, they'll recommend a lot of materials and tools on how to make stuff. Have you got a favorite cosplay that you've done? Uh, that one's actually quite hard because every time I make a costume, uh, there's something I better and then I want to do it better on the next project and then you kind of the longer you look at it the more you start hating it and you're like no I don't want to I don't want to wear it anymore <laughs> this wrong I, I gotta do it better next time but since you're always making different projects and newer projects that are in no way the same outfits as what you did before it, it the, that part gets kind of hard but when it comes to uh, wearing costumes and interactions and all that kind of stuff because like, of course some costumes are better received than others and some costumes are nicer to wear and all that um, uh, I think my first uh, Demon Hunter was really the one uh, that I really liked the most because it was the first time I got the wings to work and it just looked so imposing for uh, for on video and photos that uh, that was really uh really uh, my favorite one at that time and it hasn't really been surpassed yet because uh, at that point you you kind of have to create something way bigger and cooler than that it, it's it's gonna be hard so you know so I think that will be my uh, favorite to date so how long roughly would you say you spend on each project just say for example Carapac like how many uh, hours if you could give a rough hours is uh, pretty difficult because yeah. there'll be a week that i would won't work on it and there will be a full week where i work 80 hours on it mm -hmm. uh, i know carapac took me about two months but it also had a lot of months of planning in it and uh, also because i had to do it, a lot of documentation for my college to make sure that it was approved as a graduation project and um I think on average each costume takes about 500 hours if you would say if a full week work week is 40 hours yeah 500 hours is uh, is a pretty good approximate though every costume really can change uh, in uh, how how much parts and how how much materials it takes so Carevac was a really large one yeah. and if I uh, if I take uh, for example my monster hunter cosplay it was a lot smaller and it just takes less hours then. And of course, the amount of details it has. So have you got everything that you've ever made pretty much stored somewhere in your house? Or is it... <laughs> have you had to get rid of <laughs> I, some of it? I, I sold a lot of costumes, yeah. uh, but I have a couple uh, old parts remaining. For example, uh, of course, the RuneScape cosplay scene is not that large, so I have costumes as well. Though uh, I did sell my Meritual uh, cosplay. Because it was kind of like a generic elf cos costume, so it was easy to sell. And uh, though I still have Carapac, I still have Nex. And um, the head you see on the wall here is from my old Diablo costume. Uh, though everything else is now in the trash. <laughs> but there's a lot of like uh, old parts from costumes that I keep. Like the best parts, like a hell prop. Or... And I, I kind of have that, them hanging around the house, yeah. Especially because... I... If, if it's a part that I was proud of making. Mm. And then uh, there's a couple of costumes that I have sold. I can fund uh, my budget for future costumes and just keep rolling like that. So what is your plan? Sort of, what have you got planned? What's coming up? It's in the pipeline. Uh, I got a, a competition coming up next month. I'm making a costume right now. 
And uh, in the meanwhile, I got some uh, Comic-Con cosplays coming up from X-Men. And uh, I'm also making uh, Mewtwo from Pokemon that I'm still working on. And uh, I, I want to make a new costume for this year's RuneFest as well. Uh, though I am not completely sure on what that's going to be. There's a couple of cool uh, NPCs that I might make. Um, I really like, for example, the design for the Exile, which is the uh, Corayo from uh, from the uh, from the islands mm -hmm. yeah. that you can do uh, do with uh, the uh, player-owned ports. Uh, I really like the design, but she's not that popular, so I'm not sure yet on making her. And I also want to make some really cool props, like uh, Staff of Sliske, and I also want to make uh, the Hellfire bow from the Witness, and make like a really giant flaming bow, that sounds <laughs> awesome. Uh, but then again, if I pick one of those props, I want to make an outfit with it, and make it nice and matching, so I still have to go through some fashion escape to figure out uh, what I want to compile for all that, and uh, make sure that I got a matching outfit. So I still, I'm still trying to decide which one of those three or it's gonna be so so you're pretty set on going back to runefest this year you reckon yeah i think so uh i also uh have uh I'm not i don't think i'll because i have a, uh, other costume plans for this year but i really do want to make a uh, vindicta sometime but maybe this year maybe next year i don't know yet <laughs> so yeah, vindicta would be like an old project yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she doesn't have wings like her back but uh she makes up for detail so <laughs> that would be really cool so how do you work with stuff like leds and whatever do you have to like program them in or is it you kind of get them with sort of i'm uh, yeah i'm not too good with programming um i started out with like the simple uh fairy lights and christmas lights that you buy for the for your christmas tree and they're like battery powered so you can get them in all sorts of colors so that worked out well for me and uh then i started using the led strips that you mount between uh b behind your tv they're really convenient uh because they're uh, usb powered so you just plug them into a usb power bank and they light up uh, those are really convenient to use in props. And I also have a couple props that have like the animated LEDs. And those need to be programmed. So you have like a little chip that you can uh, connect to them. Mm -hmm. And you can actually download a lot of pre-programmed patterns online and tweak them a little bit and have them the color that you want. So that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm not that advanced into the programming the LEDs right now, but I do want to try to get better and... Uh, and uh, make my own patterns rather than uh, start downloading them and tweaking them for now. All right, lovely. Well, I think I've covered everything I had to ask you. So thank you very mm -hmm. much for your time. Have you got any awesome. shout outs you want to make? Sorry? Have you got any shout outs you want to make? Oh, shout outs. Okay, so I really like, um, I really enjoyed meeting the RuneScape cosplay community last year. Of course, uh, we uh, we know Teasgut, I think, and uh, we also know uh, Sen, so, uh, who's been making, uh, who've both been making awesome costumes over the last few years. And I really hope that we're going to see more uh, RuneScape cosplayers this year, are showing up with awesome props and uh, and maybe win that gnome uh, sometime. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for coming on. I'll see you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. I'll see everybody next week, and goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>